for today's headlines. Trade Union Congress of the Philippines pleads wage hike. Banco Central ng Pilipinas confident in monetary stance. Airport immigration manpower now 100%. Conviction of child porn producer lauded. Tupas files cyber libel charges versus Bellio. Senator Christopher Bongo lauds land transfer to 41 Taytay residents. Duterte most Congress special session on rising fuel prices. South Korea bans exports to Belarus. Good morning, I am Kim Sancha and this is Tribune News on Q. Today is the 8th of March 2022 and these are the latest news this Thursday, uh, just Tuesday morning. The Associated Labor Group Trade Union Congress of the Philippines, or ALUTUCP, is set to demand a hike from 537 pesos to 750 pesos for a daily minimum wage as the war between Russia and Ukraine is expected to impact the prices of the basic commodities. The Brent crude, the global oil benchmark, has now ballooned to above $139 per barrel before easing back to below $130. But it has sent fuel pump prices to skyrocket. Hefty price increases in fuel are to be implemented in the Philippines starting today. Alan Tanhusay of the said labor group during a guesting in Daily Tribune's morning program, Gising Na, on Monday said it's about time that wages of workers are increased. He said it has been two years that the workers' wage remained stagnant due to the pandemic. The ALUTUCP has not filed any wage increase because they understand the situation. But as fuel prices continue to spike, which will affect prices of commodities and food, then they will appeal for a wage increase in the coming days or weeks. Tan Jose said they will channel the wage increase petitions through the wage boards, which are under the Department of Labor and Employment, as Congress is currently in recess due for the May 9 elections. He stated that 750 passes wage is a clamor among lawmakers supportive of the call. The current minimum wage in National Capital Region is 537 passes, that which took effect in October 2017. With the worsening Russo-Ukrainian war now causing serious effects on most economies in the world, the country's head of the Banco Central ng Pilipinas, or BSP, said its impact on the country will not be that upsetting. Banco Central Governor Benjamin Diokno mentioned, in particular, the not-so-rattled outcomes in inflation and exchange rate, but said it will surely take its huge toll on some commodities, such as oil, energy, and food. He said that its impact to the country will be indirect, as it will be felt on the global economy through prices of commodities, such as oil and energy and food. Direct effects of the war through trade and investments are expected to be muted as Russia and Ukraine are not considered major players in the world economy. The BSP chief noted that the war's huge effects are likely to come from the spiking oil prices and concerns over possible disruptions in global oil supply. He said that based on the estimation of capital economics, a worst-case scenario where oil prices could rise up to $120 to $140 per barrel if energy trade flows are sharply, are sharply disrupted. Oxford Economics, in its most recent assessment of potential macroeconomic impact, estimates that a full invasion scenario would cause a setback in global growth, cutting 0.2 percentage points and 0.1 points from its global gross domestic product growth forecast for 2022 and 2023, respectively. Bureau of Immigration, or BI, operation at the airport are now in full force as the country approaches its first month of implementing its 
ease border restrictions. According to Bureau of Immigration Port Operations Division Chief Attorney Carlos Capulong, they have already implemented the 100% on-site work capacity and resumed their pre-pandemic shifting schedule as they expect the number of arriving passengers to increase in the next few weeks. Capulong said that from Around 8,000 daily passengers on the first week of the implementation of our open borders. They are now seeing more than 9,000 daily passengers and are expecting this gradual increase as they transition to the new normal. He added that they are projecting that the figures will increase to 10,000 to 15,000 passengers in the next few months. Meanwhile, Bureau of Immigration Commissioner Jaime Morente said that he already ordered the border operations to prepare for the expected increase in travelers. He said they expect the number of travelers to further increase as the summer season approaches. Tribune News on Q will be back after these reminders. yourselves in three words. Yes, Doctora. Three words. Should I say confident, radiant, beautiful? Uy, ah. Ito yung three letters. Three words ko. Naturally more beautiful. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Globe, our steps can lead us to millions of doors opening. Millions of paths unfolding, and millions of reasons to keep going. Now's the time to be with the network that gets better every day for you. Araneta City, home to the country's first indoor shopping mall, the world's original thriller, and the first ever Bini Bini pageant. Now a place for your first win, your first catch, your first home. Your first big break. Your first date. And even your first love. Araneta City, the city of firsts. What's nice is that because of our innovative ways, we were able to keep almost 500 employees. We did not lay off anybody. We are back on Tribune News on Q. The Department of Justice has hailed the conviction of an American sentence to 160 years in prison for producing and attempting to produce child pornography and receiving and distributing pornography of Filipina children. Justice Undersecretary Emeline Aglipay Villar said the conviction of Benjamin Walter is a triumph not just for his victims, but also for other victims of sexual abuse and exploitation. Villar, who is also the undersecretary in charge of the Interagency Council Against Trafficking, or IACAT, issued a statement on the announcement made by, by the United States DOJ that last 4th of March, a federal judge sentenced Walter, 41, to 160 years in prison for using internet applications to seek images and live transmissions of the violent sexual abuse of Filipino children as young as five years old. The DOJ official said online exploitation of children is one of the vilest of crimes that preys upon the most vulnerable, the innocent children. She stressed that most of them are left scarred for life and it is important for their complete recovery and healing that their abusers are held accountable for their crimes. 
Villar said the country has the highest incidence of online sexual exploitation of children, or OSEC, in the world, and the number keep on growing every year. Former Davao City Information Officer Jeffrey Tupas on Monday filed cyber library charges against Vice Presidential Candidate Walden Bellio in Davao City over his accusation that she's a drug dealer. Tupas said in a statement that what Bellio said about her are false unfair, malicious, and downright unacceptable, which caused her emotional distress. The complete stem from a virtual press conference on 1st of March, where Belia brought up Tupas' alleged involvement in a drug raid in Double De Oro in November last year. Velio was referring to the incident at a beach resort in Mabini Town, where Philippines Drug Enforcement Agency officer seized some 1.5 million pesos worth of suspected high-grade party drugs and other illegal substances. While Tupas was not among the arrested, she admitted to having attended the party but stressed that she left the venue one hour before the raid. Due to her alleged involvement, Dabo City Mayor Sara Duterte Carpia announced that Tupas had been terminated from the Dabo City Hall on the same day that she signified her resignation. Meanwhile, for Bellio, the charges filed by Tupas were clearly a politically motivated move and a form of harassment. Gold Lodge uh, land transfer to 41 Thai Thai residents. Senator Christopher Bongo congratulated 41 new land title holders from Thai Thai result during a turnover ceremony led by the Department of Environment and Natural Resources. 2,100 square meter lots in Lupang Arenda, Barangay Santa Ana were distributed to the informal settlers and members of the Samahang Masigad Masigasig Tapayan Homeowners Association. The move marked the latest demonstration of the Duterte administration commitment to resolving land ownership issues in the country, Go said. The senator pledged to continue advocating for the people of Rizal as an adopted son of the Calabarzon region. He swore to push for similar program, projects, and initiatives that will benefit more communities, especially the underprecedented segments of the population. Tribune News on Q will be back. Stay with us. I said, you cannot grow, you cannot be successful if you are not a humble person. This public service advisory is brought to you by Daily Tribune and 100.3 RJFM. Vaccination, isolation, gotta keep up with my nutrition, gotta maintain my bad condition, then I can take my vaccination. What do I choose? What do I take? As long as it is not a fake. AstraZeneca, Moderna, BioNTech, even Sinovac, okay now. Vaccination for the nation, no more isolation. With vaccination. Paturo, paturo. 
This public service advisory is brought to you by Daily Tribune and 100.3 RJFM. And you are still watching Chibi News on Q. President Rodrigo Duterte is considering the possibility of calling for a special session of Congress to approve proposed measures meant to cushion the impact of spiraling oil prices aggravated by the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Two of the solutions presented by the National Economic and Development Authority, or NEDA, to the president require enabling laws, namely lowering oil tariffs and raising the country's buffer stock of gasoline and diesel from the current 30 days to 45 days. If the situation escalates, we could recommend a special session, said Socioeconomic Planning Secretary and NEDA Chief Carl Chua during the president's televised meeting with select cabinet members on Monday night. However, the chief executive expressed doubts on whether the legislative could approve the measures proposed by NEDA with the May 9 national elections around the corner. Duterte then instructed Executive Secretary Salvador Medialdea to look into ways where the executive branch could act on its own to implement NEDA's proposals. For the world news, South Korea said Sunday it will implement export controls again close Moscow ally Belarus for effectively supporting the Russian invasion of Ukraine without detailing what specific measures would be taken. Seoul's foreign ministry said the restriction would be similar to those previously imposed on Russia. South Korea last month said it would tighten export controls against Moscow by banning shipments of strategic items and join Western countries in suspending financial transactions with several major Russian banks. Russia's military has used Belarus as an important staging ground for its assault on neighboring Ukraine through Belarusian strongman leader Alexander Lukashenko has stressed his own forces have not taken part. South Korea's decision comes as Western governments, sporting organization, and growing lists of major companies have isolated Russia, labeling punishing sanctions over the internationally condemned attack on its neighbor. And that wraps up the stories this morning. Before we go, we would like to thank the SM Store, Arenata City, the Department of Tourism, MG Motors, Heine Motors, Security Bank, Empire Eastland Holdings Incorporated, and Overseas Community Affairs Council member Alan Lin of Republic of China for their continued support. Again, my name is Kim Sancha on Tribune News on Q. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay at home, and happy International Women's Day. Good morning. Catch the latest news on our website, tribune.net.ph. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Tribune Now. Download the Daily Tribune app on Apple Store for iOS and Google Play for Android to get the latest and most comprehensive news online. Daily Tribune invites you to join its vibrant community, Katribu, to get updates on the hottest news on politics, business, sports, lifestyle, and entertainment. Emoticons of the Tribune mascot, Tarsito, are available on our community Viber.